Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Glory to God, what a beautiful day the Lord hath made. We've got a cold front coming in. Brother Ronnie, our roving weatherman, said it's going to be in the 40s this week. Yes. Glory to God. Oh. You hear that? Where's my amen? It's going to be in the 40s. No. Right. Oh, we ain't getting off on a good start. <laughs> <coughs> Let's start again. Good morning, church. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. It's good to have everybody here this morning. Uh, this is a kid. Good to have you visiting. That's Ryan's mother from Texas. Good to have you here, here. And everybody else here, good to have you as well. We need to be in prayer for the Henderson family. <clears throat> at least one Henderson family. I don't know where the other Henderson family is at. Yep, here they are. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, not uh, Annette is her blood pressure is way up this morning, and so the whole family is staying behind to uh, keep an eye on her. So we need to remember her in prayer this morning. Matter of fact, we're going to take a lot of needs to the Lord in prayer here in, in a few moments. I just feel led. There's some in the house that have got issues. Some in their family have issues, and we're going to just have a good old time in the Lord this morning in prayer. I'll tell you what, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night. What a service. Amen. <clears throat> I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit was so thick. I tried to come behind this pulpit. And I'll tell you what, it was difficult for me to stand. That rarely happens to me. But Brother Fletcher was crying behind me. Others began to cry and cry out to the Lord in one accord. And the Holy Spirit just began to move. And uh, Brother Fletcher, why don't you go ahead and give that testimony real quick, please? <clears throat> we prayed for my wife. Uh, she had asked for special prayer for tonight. She's had a, actually yesterday was 12 years since she had that brain tumor. And she's really had a rough time ever since. And they kind of give up, you know. I, I can just tell. And uh, as soon as we got out of here next tonight, I called her. And she's up. She's you know. She sets up. All night, she was all day, but she was, she was up and she said, uh, well, I feel about the same. And I told her about the service. By the time I got home, the first thing she said, she says, she said, you know, my name's still in the book. <laughs> I said, it is. And the, the next morning she got up, I was up from work, she got, got on up and come down the hall with her walker, smiling. She never does that. Before she went in the restaurant, she said, My name is Billy McClure. <laughs> she sat up all day with me, uh, slept all night, the night before, and, and uh, has been up all day ever since, here today. And so, God, she can't, she can't quit saying that. My name is still in the book. <laughs> 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 Church, <laughs> that's why one of the reasons why we praise the Lord. Some of you out there watching me wear YouTube, Facebook, whatever. This church will shout a little bit. This church is going to praise the Lord. This church is going to pray unto the Lord because God answers prayer. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us this morning from the book of Ephesians. Very quickly, I want to read this to you. For this, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. For this cause... I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, the Lord Jesus Christ, the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he, Christ Jesus, would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. I love this next verse, church. Get this in your spirit this morning, please. Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that 
we ask or think according to the power that works in us unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end Amen Amen World without I'm getting trouble again you hear that? You know who you are. Turn them in. World without end. World without end. That's what the Word of God says. That settles it. Amen. Amen. You love the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Father, we just thank you for your many blessings. The greatest blessing of all is the blessing of Calvary. The precious blood of thy son Jesus to wash away our sins, to cleanse us, Lord, to reclaim us into your family, but it also protects and preserves. Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit this morning to move in power, to touch every heart and every life here, and those that are watching, wherever in the world they may be, that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. The, today is the day of restoration. Today is the first day of the rest of our life. In you, we look forward to this service. Oh God, we surrender it all to you in Jesus' name and all of God's saints. Said, Amen. 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 And is your name in the book? This morning? Amen. 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 <coughs> well, rest assured, if your name's in that book when that trumpet sounds, we go.
you're not ready, you better get ready. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it can happen anytime. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. A country where the twilight shadows deepen. Yeah.
something. How many have been through trials and troubles in your life? We all have. Some of them hang around, some of them don't. I love this song. It says, if the sun don't ever shine again, the Lord's blessed me enough, he don't ever bless me again. Problems come from day to day. Some pass on by. Stand them all out of the But bring peace down into my soul. They give me strength as I go along. And in my heart, I still have a storm. So in darkness.
Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to go back to Wednesday night just for a moment. Is the Holy Spirit had full reign in this house because this house was gathered in one accord around the proverbial cross of Christ, if you will, looking for answers, hurting and pain, looking out under the Lord. <clears throat> maybe we'll study today, maybe we won't. As we did last Sunday, the battle is the Lord's. But <clears throat> we've been praying for a while for you. Somebody told me that you got a job this week. Is that true? Back up! Okay. There's healing in the cross. Hello? There's healing in the cross. There's a job in the cross. There's whatever you need in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Lord, lay this on my heart and I'm just going to do it. Brother Marlon, I want you to jump in here. But when you said that, about that she's been fighting this for 12 years. Amen. The Holy Ghost came all over me. And this is what? And it came to pass that when Jesus had returned to Capernaum, the people gladly received Him for they were waiting on Him. Glory to God! They were waiting on Jesus! They knew He was coming! And behold, there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and saw he that he would come into his house where he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age. And she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. In other words, restrained him. They they came around him wanting to be in the presence of the Lord. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. Are you with me this morning, church? God don't do things happenstance. He is not a She had that issue 12 years which she had spent all of her living upon positions neither could be healed of any. Came behind him and touched him. Touched the hem of his garment and immediately her issue of blood snatched and Jesus said who touched me? Who touched me? Everybody around said, Jesus, everybody's touching you. He said, oh no. Oh no. I want to know who touched me because I know that virtue has departed from me. Church, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be in the midst of you. You reach out. You reach out and touch the Lord. You reach out and touch the Lord. We're going to intercede here. I want this church. If you have a need, I want you to come down. Don't you sit there. Come on, sister. You came to me before church started. Bring it. I don't care. I don't care. Come here, sister. Come on, sister. You're going to come talk to the pastor before church and say, I've got a need? Well, tell the pastor ain't going to help. Per se, but telling Jesus, Amen. telling the Lord, Amen. there's the difference. You see, who did she touch? She didn't touch the synagogue ruler, did she? She didn't touch the preacher, did she? No, she touched the hem of his garment, the Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately, immediately the blood stands after 12 years. Look where I feel it. Anybody else need prayer? Anybody else this morning? Glory to God. Can I get some help down here, please?
say he's not done performing miracles like some people think. There is no such thing as a cessation doctrine because Jesus has not ceased. You see, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Not only did he provide one job to my right, he provided another job to my left. Amen, sister? Yeah. <clears throat> you see, when you pray, good things happen. Amen. You see, the Word tells us. I'm going to go on here for a second. I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And the woman saw that she was not hid. She came trembling before the Lord and falling down before Him. Again, she didn't fall down before a preacher. She didn't fall down next to her kin. She fell down at the feet of the Lord and declared unto Him before all the people for what cause she had touched Him. Hail her Lord! I spent all my money. I did all I knew what to do for this issue of 12 years that I've been going through. I'm broken. You're my only hope. And then, when she, when she confessed, Jesus said, Oh, daughter. Oh, daughter. See, she's no longer just a maiden. She's a daughter. She's no longer just a woman. She's a daughter. Glory to God. Jesus would say, Be a good comfort. <coughs> What made her whole? Jesus said the very next thing. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Your faith, looking straight inward, your faith, just like a sister, a wife telling a husband, please have the church pray for me. Why ask the church to pray for you if you don't believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Hello? He ain't asking for a mountain of faith. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. See, now he calls her daughter his own. Oh, but now, see, we got another issue. Somebody else, 12 years. Remember? There's two stories here. Back to back. While Jesus yet spoke, there came out from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying unto him, To Jairus, your daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. In other words, Jesus, you're too late. She's dead. But Jesus heard it. He answered him saying, Fear not. That's what the Lord is trying to get into his church, into our heart today. You listen to me at home. Fear not. No matter what's going on in this world, fear not. I'm on the throne. And glory to God. He's on the throne. But let me ask you a question this morning. Is he on the throne of your heart? He's on his throne. He don't change. But is he on the throne of our heart praise team this morning? Amen. Oh, he would say, fear not. Believe only. And she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, in other words, the house of curious, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maid. Why? Why did Jesus exclude everybody else except Peter, James, and John and the father and the mother? He ain't got time for no faith. He is looking for those that realize that he's a big God, pray big. Amen. Amen. He's a big God, pray big, believe it. That's why he wanted Peter, James, and John and the mother and the dad. He did not want the naysayers around him. I don't have time for that. I want people that will believe that I am. Oh, that I am. And I'm all you need. You, you say it. You say it. If the sun never shines again. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. And that's enough. And that's exactly what he was trying to show them. If you got me, you got everything. Amen. You got everything you'll ever need. Oh, but in him, you see, he's a blessing God. He didn't stop with salvation. It is an ongoing work in us of sanctification that we're continuing to be set apart from this world unto him. <clears throat> and during that time though we're still in this mortal coil we got problems you talk about trials and tribulations 
many in here that aren't feeling well. I know there's scores where you're not feeling well. But our God is able. Our God is able. He will see you through. Amen. Amen. He will do it if we will believe. He is a God of miracles. Isn't he, Brother Marta? Yes, he is. Tell me something, please. I need I need a I need somebody to tell me something. You're speaking about wisdom. I talking about the spirit fruit of the day, man. Yes, sir. It will begin to move in one spot. And then it will begin to move to others. Yes. And it wasn't just wasn't in one place in this church, it was moving all over the church. Yes. Different ones begin to <coughs> pray in tongues. And yes. you just feel the spirit. I see them right now. Amen. And then they I've heard people say it ain't about a feeling, but I love that feeling. When it, he begins to spread all over the church, you can look for good things to happen. Yes, brother, come on. But it takes people, willing people, that's really willing to seek him yes. and wants to just put their, their things aside and pray, yeah. pray God. Yeah. We need you here for all of us right now. Yes, we yes, need you yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. And I just want to praise him for who he is and what he does. Yes. And, uh, we're not none of us special. That's he's right. special. That's it. And he's yeah. special. That's it, brother. We just hey, got a few right. that's <coughs> with it. And that's the one he seeks out. The oh, ones that's with it. And oh, love him. And trust him. Yes. And I just want to praise him today. Praise God. Praise God. Can I say something? Come on, brother. I haven't <clears throat> I haven't had a chance. Well, I guess I've had chances, but I haven't gave my testimony lately. Um, a lot of y'all know, some of y'all may not know, that I was locked up a couple weeks, two, three weeks. And I was facing some charges that was trumped up and lied and misconstrued it, and the, the, the powers that be believed it. So they put me in handcuffs and they sent me to jail. I was facing felony charges. And what they were, they were misconstrued, misunderstandings, however you want to call it. But they were faced with lies. I was going down the road and I asked God, I said, Who am I supposed to call? Everybody told me to go get the most expensive lawyers, out of state lawyers, this, 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 this. And I just never felt peace about that. And I had God brought me a, a, a person in my spirit. I called that person. He told me to call so and so. I went to the lawyer. He's an in town lawyer. Wasn't a very expensive, probably one of the cheapest lawyers I've, I've met. I talked to him. He said, "We're not gonna, we're not gonna get it reduced down from a felony to a misdemeanor. We're gonna get this all gone away." Well, my mind, like, okay, well, that sounds good, but ain't that what lawyers say? Mm -hmm. I went home and I prayed. <coughs> Pastor prayed. We all prayed. Everybody's praying that knows about the situation. I get a phone call about three days later, maybe four days later. All charges were dropped. Oh, the district attorney said this ain't even worth this time. <laughs> when you talk about the chains yeah. come off, uh, when you find a cell behind you, you close and you are in a cell and you have <coughs> 12 other men in there and you're the prettiest one in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was at peace throughout that whole time I was in jail for, for about four days. I almost led a guy to salvation while I was in there. We had a prayer in there. I read three books of the Bible while I was in there. I had peace. Amen. But when your freedom's taken away from you right. and you're locked up, that's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. But my God. But my God. Yes. But my God. Yes. Yes. contacted by the family regarding the issue at hand I began to pray and I just said Lord this is bigger than us I can't go break him out I, I, I can't 
you know. And like you said, some of them silly lawyer commercials call whatever, you know. No, I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord. And you know, I've said this I don't know how many times, and I'm going to keep saying, Lord, help us. Simple prayer. Lord, help us. A few days later, by God. By God. By God. Sometimes it's 12 years. I don't know God's timing. I know. But I know God. Amen. And I, before I dismiss the praise team, Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for good to them who love God Amen. and are called unto His purpose. His will. I have a testimony, Paul. Come on. <clears throat> Six years ago, I died. Multiple times. Yes, you did. I was flat. It's done. Less than 20% of my heart. <clears throat> and a lot of people came in because you know, my old parents were scattered around. They thought I wasn't going to make it. I didn't either. I was gone and I was, I started praying, you know. But, and a uh, pastor came in from, you know, one of them who likes special churches. And I did the wrong thing. I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm not going to mention no names, I, no churches, no names. And I'm saying it was the wrong thing that I did. I told him, I said, I need a guy, and I said, you know what? Debbie has a pastor coming that I've never met. And I said, my daddy knows a preacher. And I said, I'm waiting. And I said, you go ahead and leave now. And that was the wrong thing for me to do. Don't get me wrong, at the time, I was a hoover. But I've never been a cop but I was moving in that place. Anyway, Brother Green showed up. When I grabbed his hand, the Spirit of God hit me. And let me tell you, we all prayed. When he prayed over me, I'm not saying it was him, it was God. The Spirit of God worked through it. But God. And uh, six years later, I got 25%. <laughs> but it's better than it was. That's right. Praise God. And I'm so thankful. I've been kicking for six years with a space marker and people there, and I'm still kicking. And I praise God for that. And uh, <coughs> I'm not saying you were praying because you had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but uh, it was a wonderful experience because it, it, it hit me. You know, I felt the Spirit of God through it. And uh, they was there praying to me. A lot of prayers went out. I made it. I didn't, I didn't die all the way. I'm still here for some reason. I don't know why. I'm here. One step at a time. One day at a time. You see, brother, a preacher of the gospel is just a messenger boy. Amen. See it. You know, it did, but the Lord. I had faith. That's that, one that's way what she did. Matters. That's what that girl did. I'm going to reach out and touch the Lord. I'm going to reach out and touch Him. And you had just enough faith. Yeah, what she did was wrong with another preacher. I know it was wrong. <coughs> I apologize to him. I went that to the church and apologized to him. Real nice guy. But the Lord, you see, he went deeper on you. He saved your soul. That he did. And he healed my son, Jesse. That's right. In this church. In this church. Stage three brain cancer. Stage three brain cancer. Seizure. I took him to MD Anderson. We stayed for months. And Doug would be holding in his head right now. He is working back in the oil field and pulling back vitamin and dairy. And strong as ox with muscles this big. Praise God. And he got saved in this church. And he'll tell it to this day, and he ain't ashamed. He'll walk here and he's going to come back. I promise you that. He's free brain cancer. 
down. No more issues, MRIs. I asked that doctor, I said, what are the chances of coming back? He said, 50% chance. That's been a while. And every MRI shows nothing. Amen. By God. By God. By God. Touch the Lord, as He goes by.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, cause you are. somebody else to preach next Sunday because our other deacon said you went over about 10 minutes too long. <laughs> we don't. It sounded funny but I didn't take it that way. I didn't care about me. First thing I thought of is what Brother Barton said one time because he ain't got a 30 minute sermon in him. So you know. Amen. But I did what I, I did. I looked at it like I did what God told me to do. That's right. Amen. You know. I prepared all week. I prayed and I served and I sought the Lord. And I did something Brother Green told me when I first started preaching. Is, hey, you do what the Lord does, said do. When you walk away from there, you leave it to the Lord. That's, right. That's, That's his business. But it just broke my heart all, all that week. Not because of that, but uh, I thought, here you are, a group of people that are hungry for the Lord. So, or at least some of them in there are hungry for the move of the Lord. And y'all got the Lord compacted in an hour. They had an hour church. They had 15 minutes of some dry old singing out of a hymn book and a little bit of an announcement. They give you about 20 minutes to preach. And uh, it just it just bothered me, Brother Green, for a long time after that. And, I, and last, I done forgot about it, the whole deal. Last Sunday in this service, that year, I felt the Holy Spirit come over and He brought that back to my memory. That, this, that church and how there's people hungry in that church well you know there's people gathered all over the nation this morning in churches just like this Amen. and the Lord spoke to me last Sunday in here that people are dying and going to hell and are lost this morning over tradition right. and over family I was sitting here at men's breakfast Saturday after Saturday after Saturday with people in this neighborhood coming from different churches and sit here at this table with us. And I've never been in a men's prayer meeting that the Holy Ghost hadn't failed in that place. 
And even people from other churches that sat around that table with tears running down their face and know they felt, for the first time ever, felt the presence of the Lord. Right. But because of Mamma and Grandpa go somewhere or uh, right. in tradition, there's people out there this morning that are dying and starving for the Lord. But they, they're, they're bound by, by family and tradition. Great Grandpa started this church, so, so we got to just go, go with it. And I tell you, I said, we need to, I felt the Lord last, last week, what we got right here is special. This ain't in every building that you're going to pass today as a church. What we got right here is because of the, we're the church. We come in here seeking and hungry for the Lord. We're not bound. We got people in this church <coughs> that have left churches for that reason. Right. That they were hungry for something else. You know, I ate dinner with Brother Ronnie last Sunday. And I was telling him them about that, you know. And, but they was hungry. And he put tradition and he put all that other stuff behind him. Right. You know, people, there's people up there this morning going to die and go to hell and spend their whole life in church and never taste the goodness of the, what we taste here this morning. That's right. What we got here this morning That's is right. very, very special. We all know that, but I'm just, we don't need to take it for granted. We need to thank God. Well, this may be a little small remnant. That's what the Bible talks about all the time. It's not a large remnant. I ain't been about a large remnant in the Bible. He's always seeking that small remnant. But we need to just sometime in our prayer lift up these churches. Yes. We don't need to talk about them. We don't need to put them down. We need to lift them up in the spirit because them are souls that's sitting in these buildings. That's right. It's going to die lost. And I just thank God that we can come to this place this morning to feel the Lord. That's right. Feel. And like he said, it ain't all about feeling. But brother, I'm like, Brother Martin, I love that feeling I feel this morning. Yes. You know, I just share, just share that with the Lord. And there's what we got is very, very special here. Yes, we should never get used to it or take it that that's just the way it's going to be. Because he said he'd have the praises of his people. That's right. If we don't come in here and worship and praise him, he ain't coming. That's right. He don't need every one of us here this morning right. to worship him. What his brother Dre said last week, I'll get the rocks and the trees and the birds to praise me. I don't have to have you praise me. That's right. It's a privilege and an honor. I said, I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. Amen. Amen. Amen to praise Him. And I'm just thankful for this place and thankful for what I feel here this morning. We should just remember those that are that are out there that are seeking the same thing. Yes. I love you this morning. Oh, oh, oh. This word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You see, last Sunday we had a great service. Wednesday night we had a great service. And this morning I'm not even going to preach. I thought I preached this morning, but I wasn't preaching. Maybe it was, but that's not what I prepared for. God prepared God prepared this. We, we come expecting. Just like if you go to a restaurant, don't you expect to be fed a good meal? Amen. Don't you? Or why go to the restaurant? I come in here to praise Him. Because he is my nourishment. He's my nourishment. I get my sustenance from the Holy Ghost. Amen. And without him in this house, we're just having an empty fellowship. Sing it before we get ready to go. Sing it.
kills me. Gotcha. So it takes me five hours to just eat Well, you know, uh, a lot of people know, I, I just, I can't function. I've been praying about it, praying. I'm keeping it alive. I've got the faith. The answer's on its way. Is that what we say? I need it. The answer's on its way. It's like to stay awake past four or five o'clock in the evening. And then you got Brother Lauren Larson that'll be here Saturday night, 6 o'clock, and then again on Sunday morning at 10. Remember, 6 o'clock, not 6.30, this Saturday night for Lauren Larson. Saturday night, Saturday night 6 o'clock, and then Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Let me tell you something. If you've not heard Brother Lauren Larson and seen him in person, and you can be here and you're not, you're going to miss out on a huge blessing. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to miss out. I've been praying about this. I'm saying, Lord, we need that old time gospel revival meeting. That's what I'm praying for. And you notice in our church services, it's just like it's building. It's been building for several weeks now, brother. You can just feel it. As we talked about Wednesday night, there's something going around in the spirit world. You can feel that. That there's something going on. What? We had it today. God is good. Amen. Anybody else got anything real quick? I do, bro. Come on. Lord, put this on my heart. On Tuesday, we had prayer meeting. Yes, sir. A couple of prayer meetings back. I knew David was having a problem. I didn't know. I knew where he was at, but I didn't know. Didn't think much about it in the morning, though. It wasn't none of my business. Right. But it's apparently a bit of a stiff spot on this thing. And the Lord put it on my heart. We need to pray for David. I didn't know. But when you didn't know that, but six people here on Tuesday. Right. And people work, people busy. But we had six people here. It doesn't take a crowd. All it takes is a bit of That's right. With it. To reach out and seek the Lord. Yes, Lord. And I know they, they've got touched. I have no doubt that they've got touched. Yes, he did. Okay. You're needed. We're all needed. Everybody that can seek the Lord and pray. That's right. It's special to the Lord because they're few. They're few. I just wanted to, right. just wanted to share that. Prayer meeting is special. Yes, it is. Let me in. I'm like that. Good. <laughs> See you Tuesday. I'm here. I'm here. It's important. We used to have it at night. We used to have it at 6 o'clock. But we have Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here. I'm late. You what? To be here? Anybody else? So, I've been standing here this morning. And. God's been speaking to me right here. And not only just right here, but over time. And you're going to hear me use the word time so much as I speak here. I've struggled so much to figure out when the right time is. When is the right time? When is the right time for this? When is the right time for that? But it's not my time. It's not me to figure out when the time is. It's for God to show me when the time is. And the one true thing He has showed me that it's not only the time that the praise team talked about it, a miracle. And that is my daughter. Me and my wife have tried and lost over time. And I've struggled so much to ask 
Why? 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 Why can't I have a child of my own? I have my son right here, and I love him like he's my own. I've listened as I drive, and I've seen signs of the word of time. Time on billboards. <clears throat> time on country music radio. And I've heard, not my time, over the years. When I was driving home, coming from Platinum, Louisiana, I heard one commercial that was probably about money. I can remember correctly. But I only caught one thing from that commercial. Your time. Your time. I've struggled also to figure out what my purpose is in life. Up until this past week, I will no longer put on the United States Army uniform. Twelve and a half years of sacrifice in my family to right here to right there. God could have put a child in my life at that whole time. But it wasn't it. It wasn't the time. That's right. The time is now. Amen. And my mother has said that this little girl is going to change me. She's going to change me. She is. It's going to be an adjustment, but I am so happy. I've never been so happy in my life to tell my parents. Oh, yeah. The miracle that has made its way into me and my wife's life. Praise God. And I will say this. Uh, another miracle that is here uh, that I can stand here and uh, say that probably most people in their life can never say. That my mother and my father and my other mother are in the same room in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's, no, there's no greater miracle. No greater miracle. Because the miracle is great. The timing is there. It's like I've told you before, son. Time and time again, when you started the football season and they pulled your starting spot from you, from somebody else, what did I tell you? I told you to take it to the Lord to the Lord. I didn't grow up in church, but I'm so glad that I can stand here today and bring my family into church. That I can bring them into church and have my father lead the Word of God. A lot of people out there, they're left astray. I have a man that I work with on the job site. We talk about God all the time. <clears throat> all the time. In our busy schedules. Everybody knows how the whole field goes. It's go, 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 go. Yeah. But when you got the Lord there, there's always time. There's always time. And I encourage you to always know in your heart that you've got the Lord. You have the Lord. Because when you have the Lord, time is on your side. Always. And I just, I thank Him so much. And I thank everybody in here for praying over my wife and my family when I wasn't here. We are extremely excited to be bringing her here in February. And we, we can't wait. He's a long time job. Amen. So her, her name, her name will be Everly Faith Green. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like Faith. I do. Yep. <laughs> I am too. God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time.